Hello, viewers. You can watch all episodes of this video right now on Patreon. If you can pledge a small monthly donation as low as $2 on Patreon, you can watch exclusive videos, bonus content, get free merchandise, and much, much more. Just go to patreon.com slash Christian Kids. We turn the best lessons from our faith into interesting animated videos and share them online. With your support, we'll be able to make more videos and invest more in the quality of each video. So what do you say? Every little bit helps, and your kindness will be rewarded with some pretty awesome perks. If you are not in a position to support us financially, then please do pray for us. Prayer support is very important for our mission. We hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Saints. Saint Veronica Giuliani is one of the most powerful saints that has been forgotten. So powerful that Padre Pio considered her as his teacher. Pope Pius IX said she was not merely a saint, but a great saint. Pope Leo XIII said no other being except the mother of Jesus was more endowed than her with preternatural gifts. Let's learn about this amazing saint today. Ursula Giuliani, who will later become Sister Veronica, was born on December 27, 1660, in Mercatello, a small village in the province of Marche in Italy. Her father, Francisco, was in charge of the local regiment with the rank of second lieutenant. His marriage to Benedicta Mancini had given him seven girls, two of which died at a very tender age. Ursula was the last one and, like the others, grew in a very pious environment, created most of all by her mother. Growing up, Ursula would listen with her sisters to her mother tell the stories of the saints. As Saint Veronica's mother was dying, she consecrated each of her five living daughters to the five wounds of Jesus. To Ursula, her mother said, You, Dear Orsalina, still so young, will reside in the wound of the side. The little girl was only seven years old and didn't fully understand the implications of her mother's words. Nevertheless, this was the beginning of Ursula's betrothal to Jesus' heart, the very heart which bled on the cross. Her mother died before she reached her 40th birthday, leaving Ursula and her four surviving siblings to their father's care. Even from early childhood, Ursula showed unusual signs of devotion and had her first vision and locution of Christ at age four. From a very young age, Ursula courageously endured small and great daily sufferings and encountered Christ through acts of charity. She saw Christ crucified in everyone, especially the poor. She once met an old beggar in dire need of charity. With barely anything to offer him, she gave him her favorite pair of shoes. Years later, Saint Veronica noted in her diary, this poor man seemed more beautiful to me than any other living being I had seen. And one day, as she prayed, Christ appeared to her and gave her a pair of golden shoes, saying, These are the shoes you gave me when you were a child. I was that poor beggar. When she received her first Holy Communion at age 10, she knew she had a vocation to consecrated religious life. Francisco wished for Ursula to be married and arranged for several suitors to court her, but she refused. At last, 
he gave his consent for her to begin a religious life. At the age of 17, Ursula entered the cloistered monastery of the Capuchin Poor Clares in Sita di Castello. The bishop who performed the rite of her entrance predicted to the nuns that she would become a great saint one day. He chose for her the religious name Veronica, in honor of the woman who is known traditionally to have comforted Christ during his walk to Calvary. During her novitiate, the visions of Veronica's childhood continued, and she continued to be drawn toward meditation on Christ's suffering. In her diaries, she spoke of her conversations with Jesus and claimed he would tell her which specific people she should pray for and who. In another mystic vision, she said that while she was working in the infirmary, the figure of Christ detached himself from the cross and held her in his embrace, saying, All this that I am now doing to you, I do it for you to know how pleased I am with your prayers. Imbued with sincere humility, she considered herself the lowliest member of the community. In 1682, she was chosen to serve as novice mistress, and she guided her young sisters with much care. She served in this capacity for 34 years. In 1693, in obedience to her confessor, she began writing her diary. She wrote faithfully for the remainder of her life, compiling 22,000 pages of written text. Considering her other responsibilities, the writing of her diary often required her to write very late into the night. She would frequently experience demonic attacks while she wrote, but the Lord made it clear to her that he wanted her to write. During the course of these many years of mystical visions, Veronica had several visions of hell and of purgatory. At one of these experiences, she offered herself as a doorway, standing in the breach of the gate of hell to try to turn away souls while they still had time to repent. The Virgin Mary told her that many people do not believe that hell exists, and this is to their peril. In 1694, Veronica experienced a vision where Christ showed her St. Catherine of Siena, another extraordinary mystic and gave her to Veronica as a guide and companion. In 1696, Veronica received the beginning of the stigmata wounds, a wound to the heart from her side, a phenomenon similarly experienced by Saints Teresa of Avila and Philip Neri. She described the wound as feeling like a constantly burning flame. When the marks of the stigmata appeared on her head and body, Veronica's bishop removed her from ordinary convent life and kept her under constant observation. Veronica was deposed from her office as novice mistress and deprived of every suffrage in the community. She was even imprisoned in a remote cell. No sisters were permitted to talk to her and a lay sister who was made her warden was ordered to treat her like a deceiver. It was only when he was satisfied the marks were authentic that he allowed her back into the convent to continue her service. The following year, on Good Friday, she received the remaining stigmata wounds, those to her hands and feet. She wrote that they came to her as stunning rays from the wounds of Christ crucified that she experienced in a vision, nearly identical to the experience of Saints Francis of Assisi and Pio. 
In 1716, Veronica was elected abbess and served in that role for the rest of her life. Despite her extraordinary spiritual life, she was a very friendly leader for her sisters. She enlarged the convent, had running water installed, and guided her charges with good common sense. She was 66 years old at the time of her death. An autopsy revealed that her heart bore the imprints of the cross and several of the instruments of Jesus' passion. The life of St. Veronica Giuliani was truly extraordinary. She was given the gift to see the invisible spiritual realities that are mercifully veiled from the rest of us. Like a number of more well-known mystics and stigmatics, she accepted the burdens and gifts with a willing and obedient spirit. She was tremendously devoted to the passion of Christ, and he chose her to participate in that passion in her own time for the salvation of souls in a very special way. O oh God! who declare that you abide in the hearts that are pure, grant that through the intercession of the Virgin Blessed Veronica, we may be so fashioned by your grace that we become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Hello viewers, sorry for interrupting the video. I just wanted to take a moment to request you to pray for us and donate if you can. If you can donate just $5, Christian Kids TV can keep making more videos like this. If you are not in a position to donate, then do pray for us. In fact, prayer support is very important to our mission. Thanks for your time, and we hope you enjoy the video.